Hello and welcome to Post Match Reaction to the I was rather I've got the wrong graphic up, it's not you I didn't change it in mind. Um so hello, welcome to Post Match Reaction um to San Diego Legion versus Glendale Raptors, and we have had the biggest upset of the season in the final game of the season. Um with San Diego beating Glendale twenty three five and Glendale not getting on the scoreboard until the 78th minute. I mean, that was a uh, a big surprise. Joining me to discuss this is Rob from Rugby in America. How are you doing, sir? Good. How are you? Not bad at all. I just need to turn up your volume a little bit. Um, there we go. And um, I guess we started out, we saw uh, Glendale trying to play with ball in hand, uh, San Diego not wanting it and just kicking it. Um, and San Diego really played a territory game today uh, in dry conditions as well. Yeah, and, and Glendale really kind of let them. Uh, it was I thought it was kind of odd that, that Glendale just refused to kick it out of their own half in the first, I don't know, quarter or so of the match, um, and it didn't work. Uh, so, yeah, you're right. San Diego played a much better territorial game than uh, Glendale, although given the score, they probably played a much better all, all-around game than Glendale. Well, they got the right uh, the right tactics for the, for the day, uh, and that, that, uh, the early kicking got them, got them a... Um, uh, got, oh, well, actually, um, Glendale actually were, were victims, well, were, were caused their own issues, kicking the ball out with the very first um, kick of the game, which led to a scrum on halfway. And as the commentators were saying, that one of the area that we were kind of concerned about for San Diego um, was going to be their, uh, their their set piece. But it held up really well today uh, against uh, against Glendale, who who, historic, who sort of during the season had a much much stronger scrum and, and, uh, and line up. Yeah, I don't know who those guys were, but that, those weren't the Glendale Raptors. I, those, I don't know, they went they went downtown at, in San Diego and found some guys to wear the jerseys, but th- those weren't the Raptors we're used to seeing. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how much of it was San Diego playing phenomenally, or and how much was Glendale playing certainly much more poor, poorly than we've seen them. But that it, maybe it was a combination of both. And it was, and it was only six um, nil at halftime, which showed you that really. Uh, San Diego's uh, attack wasn't really going anywhere. To be honest with you, uh, no. all, all of their points came. Well, f- kept the, the, their first points came from basically Glendale kicking the ball out to start off the, f- the first part of the game, which gave them a scrum. First breakdown from the scrum, they got a penalty and they kicked it over. We then spent the next, well, the, <laughs> the next forty minutes, um, where basically one kick. Um, they had a good kick chase. Uh, Glendale decided not to kick it back. The first, you say, the first quarter of an hour, Glendale decided they were going to play out, their, uh, out out of their own half. Then they decided to get involved in a uh, in a kicking duel, and their kickers clearly didn't have the same distance that uh, the San Diego's did, and so they were always getting pinned further back. One time they decide not to, um, and their player runs into traffic, gets himself isolated, gets caught holding on, penalty, three more points. Apart from that, it was just two sides bashing into each other and not making many yards, um, and with occasional kicking jewels in between. Yeah, you're right. So, uh, you know, if the best aspect of the game for either team was uh, San Diego's defense, the, the second best aspect was Glendale's defense. Um, <laughs> you, you're right. It, it, for 50, 60 some odd minutes, you know, it was it was a lot of people running into each other, sometimes with some some rather significant effects. That was, I don't know if we've seen a, an MLR game up to this point stop twice for, for serious in, injuries and, and justifiably so in each instance. Yeah. The first one of the, uh, we had one in the first half, um, which saw, I've gone blank as the player's name, I'm sorry, for, from one of the San Diego players go off um, and be replaced by a USA Eagle. They had, it was, right. uh, if, uh, as they said, that in some ways it perhaps strengthened the side. Um, for the player going off and then in the second half um, we saw uh, Harley Davidson go off both times players uh, tackling getting their heads the wrong side of the um, wrong, on, the, on the wrong side uh, so yeah entirely I don't know I'm not going to say blame but it's, uh, it was, it wasn't foul play that got them there it was it was poor technique um, yeah so this was yeah the, just because we had two players stretched off does not mean that in any way this was a dirty game um, no, no, it definitely wasn't dirty, but it was, you know, as you as you mentioned, it was a lot of people bashing into each other a lot. That was 
that was the the best cumulative defensive effort we've seen by two teams in any MLR game. And I don't even know what what second would be. I mean, it was that was a phenomenal defensive battle. Again, at least for the first sixty minutes or so. Then San Diego started to figure things out on offense. So the yeah, no, that was basically our, our first. I mean, um, Glendale had their opportunities in San Diego's half in that first half, but couldn't get any points on the board. Um, then would give away a couple of penalties, which would basically shift where the territory was, and the play would be uh, down the other end for a while. Um, and again, on the whole, um, San Diego uh, were unable to um, uh, to take their points. We did have a missed penalty in that first half, towards the end of the first half as well, uh, which means San Diego could have been could have been nine nil up at half time. Um, but uh, that, that's that, that's how it went. Um, the uh, Connor Kearns went down for San Diego. Thank you for that, Raymond. Um, on the who's actually in the live chat. Uh, then into the second half, um, Glendale again early pressure, no points. Um, Glendale uh, gives up some um, uh, a penalty to give San Diego the territory, and then Matthias on a lovely outside uh, run break um, gets himself uh, gets himself a try. A uh, couple of dummy runners, but uh, a bit too easy really. Uh, for for him there, what someone should have tackled him. Yeah, that was you know I was I was trying to think of reasons why this game ended up so lopsided in San Diego's favor, and I, I guess one of the things I came up with was you know if you if you if you consider that, that San Diego had Matias and they had uh, Sima and they had uh, Inguena, you know they might have had. And Tony Lamborn was the, was the other name I was looking for. You know, they might have had the three or four best players on on the field. And on that try that Mattias scored, it was actually it was actually Harley Davidson that never really found his way back into position to, to get in front of him. So you're right. On the one hand, it was too easy. On the other hand, it was an example of uh, well, you know, Ryan Mattias is a really good player. He might be the best player that's not playing for the Eagles. Uh, yeah, it was, uh, and it took an it took one of those pieces of individual skill uh, to break this down. Uh, the and, and a, yeah, a player to get, spotting that a player was out of position uh, and find that gap and go for it. <coughs> oh dear. Um, San Diego continued to pressurise, but um, were were not kind of getting um, getting any points until Sam Fig um, decided to give give away one too many penalties, and this one on his own line, and yeah, yellow carded. No, coming in, coming from the side, no real arguments. Um, no, he's kind of just a persnickety guy. He was just he seemed to be hunting for a card all night, <laughs> which um, led to a lineup mall try um, straight up, straight afterwards. But apart from that, um, Glendale managed to survive the uh, the yellow card pretty well, even go down the field and uh, apply some pressure. Yeah, I I thought. Boy, you know, I just kept waiting for them to break through, though. You know, they they get territory, but never never come up with anything out of it. Um, you know, all credit to San Diego, and, and even even at their own goal line, playing you know the stoutest of, of defense that we've seen. And I was a bit surprised. Glendale, I mean, had definitely um, had their opportunity. I think they, they they turned down three in the first half. Um, again, I think during the early the early pressure, they had another opportunity to kick for three as well. Uh, but they 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 were determined that they were going to score tries and that their line out more was going to be strong enough. And on the day, it wasn't. And they should have taken some of the uh, some of the put the points early on, just to get them on the scoreboard really, rather than leave it as a big blank zero for so long. Yeah, um, I mean, they showed up thinking we're the Glendale Raptors and we're going to walk through these guys, and uh, then you know that's that's not how it played out. <laughs> uh, and then once we also had that um, that that, that line out more try, suddenly it's twenty nil. Uh, and you're like, wow, hang on, this this is this is blown out quickly because it's six nil at half time. Um, two scores later, suddenly it's twenty nil, and this, all the scoreboard pressures on Glendale, uh, and time's running out. Um, we get another um, another penalty kicked over uh, just to to get it out to twenty three, and then eventually Glendale actually start to look like they might score. Um, but by then we're we're into the last ten minutes. Line out Maul goes over, but he drops it. Um, and uh, apparently the guy who was uh, who scored has some acting um, skills, um, from what I was hearing on yeah, the commentary. I, you know, may I, boy, I don't know. Does I, 
do you need to be able to carry the ball if you're an actor? I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, but it's, and very, in, 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 in a game that hasn't got TMO, it was a very good spot by the uh, by, by, by the linesman to, to see that, or sorry, by the assistant referee uh, to see that the, the ball had been dropped. It, you, that, that one could very easily have been given uh, in real time. Yeah, it's weird. I, you know, I wonder why they, they don't have TMOs. I mean, there's a couple of things about MLR that, that are sort of puzzling to me, and that's probably first and foremost among them. I mean, how much how expensive is it to stick a guy out in the TV truck and and have him tell you whether a guy knocked the ball on or not? I, that's that's bizarre, but you're right. Scott Green, the, the guy that officiated the game tonight, is by far the best guy that they've had officiating these MLR games. I, th- I think he's, I believe he's a Kiwi. Um, he's he's a he's a really good referee. Yeah, and he kept them. He, there are, there are occasions of of, of, of some chat back, uh, and uh, he kept the players under control and let them know how much they were allowed to talk to him. He allowed enough so that there was communication, but he didn't allow it, he didn't allow too much so that uh, there was too much dissent, which was good to see as well. Yeah, and I think he had a good game. Yeah, he did. He was um, really good. And then, yep, eventually they did get over. And I didn't even write down my notes actually how the, how they scored. So, um, uh, so there was a uh, yeah, uh, they, they scored their try on on seventy eight minutes, and even then they missed the penalty. They missed the conversion, um, and it was all way too little, too late. Yeah, I'm not even sure they scored the try. You know, there was a there was an arguably a knock on in the in the lead up to that one too, but. It was academic at that point. Yeah, it was. Um, and Raymond's comment in there was that uh, um, uh, the uh, learn uh, that uh, great. We, we learned that great line speed and decent kicking is uh, Glendale's kryptonite. And I think if you if, uh, if 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 you've got good kicking for territory uh, and you tackle everyone that runs at you, that's kryptonite for any team you're playing against. I think maybe traveling without their seven eagles is their kryptonite. <laughs> Well, yeah. I guess we'll find out. We'll all learn together next week whether that's true or not. We will. And so, um, any particular sort of players you want to call out from the uh, uh, from the game before we start talking about next weekend? Well, it was nice to see. I, I honestly didn't realize before I turned the game on that, that Lamborn was actually going to play, and and he might be a guy that you're familiar with because you, you know he used to he used to show up every once in a while for the Hurricanes uh, down in down in Wellington. Um, I, I thought he was really good. Um, he's he's actually one of my favorite Eagles. Um, Mattias was was Mattias. You know, again, I, I think San Diego ended up with the two or three best players on on the on the pitch, and uh, those guys would be the those guys would be the two that, that uh, I don't think uh, Glendale had a matchup for in either instance. Yeah, no, we also got to so, um, uh, give uh, um, Leader uh, his his dues as well. Uh, obviously, he was leading. He was oh, sorry. That, that was sorry. That was unintended. <laughs> um, he he was obviously doing most of the kicking uh, for for San Diego, and the territorial kicking was a big part of their game. Um, and I think we've also got to just say that that um, along with Lamborn, that entire pack got through a lot of tackles today uh, as, yeah, as, as, as well. So, um, so, so both both of those uh, players we have to um, talk about. And um, uh, yeah, no, you mentioned Seema, who came off the bench as well. Yeah, he because he came on pretty early um, as, as part of that kicking game. So yeah, um, D. Archibald a bit disappointed by him. Be, um, I guess his kicking range isn't uh, isn't as long, and I guess that's, it's, he's more of a fullback than he is a the, than a fly half. So he's filling in while. Um, while players are away with the Eagles, so uh, I think that that really told in this, uh, and also Fig. I mean, Fig just gave up two, uh, uh, another disappointing player, uh, just gave up too many penalties, and picking up the yellow card um, was yeah. re- really uh, at a time when they Glendale needed all their players on the pitch. It was thirteen uh, nil. Yeah, he, he made, made, that, that was a really poor choice to to, to get himself yellow carded in that situation. Yeah, I thought um, Glendale's nine ten combo just—they did not have a good night. I, I didn't. The, the ball was coming out too slow. Um, when it did come out, you know, the ash of all. I he, he's maybe he's uh, maybe he's the Damian McKenzie of MLR. He's he, he's a lot more comfortable at the tail end of the at the tail end of the group than he is in the middle trying to direct traffic. Um, I thought that's where they real they really fell down on offense was 
was you know the guys that are handling the ball primarily that that nine ten axis was not was not uh, all that great tonight. Yeah, no, it's yeah, you're right. The the, the play, well, actually the players we're talking about is eight nine ten, so it's entirely that yeah, it's entirely that access piece that we're talking about. Um, the and and Chad London didn't take any uh, didn't take any of the pressure off either. Um, no. So that that didn't help. I, I wasn't that impressed by Boyer on the other side either. I don't think his service was great, um, but they but uh, he, it didn't have to be as much because they didn't have the ball as much. They did, they deliberately were kicking it away um, to play territory. So um, it, basically, you got to shut the other team out. You can be crappy on offense. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, both teams really miss. You know, these are the two teams that have the two Eagle scrum halves. And and they each they each miss their 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 normal scrum half desperately. Um, and I think you know Boyer wasn't anything to to, to write home about. But again, I, I think the I think the guys on the Glendale side in the middle of the pitch really struggled. No, they did. Uh, and I mean, not only missing the Eagles, but also the, um, the 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 Sevens team. I think are all are all looking towards the Sevens Rugby World Cup rather than um, being loaned out to San Diego. So I think they're missing. <coughs> Um, more players than just their the, 50, the Eagles in the 15s camp. Sure. So looking forward to uh, next weekend, we have uh, the. I mean, this this means that, that um, San Diego jump back above Utah, um, who were ahead of them for about four hours um, between games, which means that uh, they now avoid uh, Glendale. But uh, being the only team that's beaten Glendale, uh, maybe. Um, that's not necessarily the best thing, but anyway. Uh, so next weekend we, we we travel to Denver, have back-to-back games um, in uh, at, at uh, in is it Rugby City? I think it's called or whatever. Um, Rugby Town. Rugby Town. Sorry. Um, and uh, Seattle will will kind of will host, as it were, um, San Diego and Glendale Raptors will host Utah Warriors, uh, and a lot of team. I mean, the commentators, um, and I think we talked about it earlier that a lot of people are kind of worried about this Utah team, that they, they could really do some damage. Yeah, they're all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but, but Glendale, Glendale's going to get their guys back. They're, they're going to get their act together. This was, I think this was more an aberration than the sign of things to come. I, I, I don't see Utah giving Glendale a ton of trouble next week. I think the other game is far more interesting. So, yeah, I mean, well, this was, I mean, Glendale, Utah is 1v4. Um, whereas Seattle um, versus San Diego is two v three, uh, so um, so talking of the Seattle San Diego t- game, what are you expecting to see from there then? I you know part of me kind of wonders you know, what the Canadians uh, Barkwell and, and Phil Mack look like when they come back. Canada had a really awful June, um, and and those guys didn't play particularly well. I mean Barkwell today against the U.S. couldn't couldn't throw the ball in the lineout, which was sort of bizarre. Um, you know, I, I, I kind of wonder the same thing about the Hagwaras when Super Rugby starts up again. You know, you go and you play with the international side and, and you have a really bad month. What what does that mean when you go back to your club? Um, I, I'm, I'm really curious to see how those two guys um, respond when they return to the, the Seattle side. On the other hand, you know, you got San Diego and their, their five or so Eagles who had a phenomenal June. You know, how much... You got a. You're coming off a win against a, a previously undefeated team. If you're San Diego, and now you're going to get a whole fleet of your Eagles back, and and they're going to be flying high. Uh, you know what? Now I made a bad pun. Um, they're they're going to be they're going to be coming off of a, a great month where they've got a lot of positive momentum. I, I wonder if I wonder if there's a mo- enough momentum there for uh, San Diego to to actually give Seattle not only a run for their money, but maybe even win that game. Where, where four hours ago, I, I, I wouldn't have thought that was even possible. Uh, yeah, I mean, this this game that we've just seen uh, San, Di- San Diego execute really uh, is it, it has, has definitely sort of woken will definitely wake up a lot of people. We've San Diego, I mean, we've been talking about the different cultures and the different teams. Um, so you've um, in in Utah. Um, to do with the church there you've got a, a very P- polynesian culture um in in yep. that team uh in glendale you've got a uh, a team that's been around and is 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 very well coached and very uh, is has got set processes uh in, in 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 place um and in san diego what you've got is a team that sit next door to the eagle sevens training camp and 
I didn't see it so much today, um, but uh, I've seen it before where their restarts looked like a sevens restart rather than like a fifteens restart, the way the, the, the players were positioned. Um, and so I've always thought of San Diego as much more of a ball playing team um, than a territorial kicking and defending team. Um, and that wasn't the culture I was expecting. I was expecting much more of a sevens culture um, out of them. Uh, and I think that's going to wake people up that actually, hey, this, that, that, that maybe that isn't their culture. Maybe their culture, maybe, maybe there's a bit more to them than that. Um, which, so that's, that's, that, that's what I think we'll, we'll, a lot of people will have seen today. And um, whereas uh, obviously the Sea Wolves, we talk, they talk about the Sea Wall, um, so they talk a lot about defence. Uh, so it really could come down to um, kicking. Uh, between the Sea Wolves and San Diego, and there might be, I mean, there may be very few scoring, oppor- uh, score, scoring opportunities in that game. Yeah, that, that's fair. Mm-hmm. You know, the other thing that occurs to me is that that first match they played early on up in Seattle, the, the San Diego forward pack in, in the scrum in particular was not very good. Um, and and early on, we're we're almost literally just getting run through by by the Sea Wolves. Um, I, but that, but it seems like it's come along a little bit. I wonder if it's come along enough to to be respectable enough to to do the types of things that you're describing. Get the ball into the backs, let them kick it around a bit, let them throw it around a bit. Um, I, I think the the Seattle, excuse me, the San Diego back line is probably more talented than Seattle's. Uh, they just need that forward pack to be stout enough to give them a chance to do what they do. Well, there's been a lot of talk of Alex Corbusiero, obviously training. Um, or, or coaching, sorry, uh, the San Diego um, team. Um, so, and that's supposed to have, uh, I know people have talked, they've, they've seen an uptick since he's been involved. Um, just to remind people, um, it, was, it was all the way back in um, round one um, that San Diego played Seattle, uh, and the score was 23 39 up in Seattle. Now, this time, obviously, the game is going to be at altitude um, in Denver. Um, so, both teams coming from sea level to, uh, to go up there and um, so we'll see if the uh, so so both teams will be kind of probably um, keeping a, a, at least a wary eye out on that last twenty minutes and the fitness being a factor for both teams. Yeah, as far as Corbusero goes, I, you know, is it possible to win Coach of the Year if you're not actually a coach? <laughs> <laughs> he might he might deserve it. Um, you know, that said, in terms of the altitude, I actually think that it would be. I, my own experience playing sports as a much younger man, I always thought that the heat and humidity was a much tougher set of conditions than the altitude. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure these guys that, that play for uh, Seattle and San Diego, and, and in particular San Diego, with all the guys they've got that play Eagles 15s and spend a ton of time in Colorado. I don't know that the, the altitude is going to affect them that much. Um, if it's you know 95 degrees in, in Denver. And you're playing at altitude. That might be a slightly different story. But I think I think both these teams are going to be all right at altitude. And the other side of it is that kicks go much longer as well, so you can kick That's further true. at altitude. Um, so that might bring the kicking into it even more um, through that side of things. I just want to go back actually to um, the reintegration of players. One of the things we've seen in some teams in the UK has been when the players come back from Six Nations or from the November internationals uh, is that they take a couple of weeks to actually get back into it because the um, the level of coaching, the style of coaching is going to change um, between international and, uh, and and your club. Also, you've been playing in front of much bigger crowds generally and there's much more hype around those games than there are around these. And that the coming down from the high of beating um, Scotland um, is, is is going to be hard to deal with. Now, thankfully, it, when they when they do that in the UK season, they come back about four or five weeks. And they're in the regular seasons. It's like I'm um, back to the drudge. At least here, they're coming back and they're going straight into playoffs. So there's a lot of adrenaline and excitement around the fact that it's playoff time. It's the first ever playoffs, so there won't be quite the big come down uh, emotionally that they had if, it, if they were coming back mid season. So maybe that that'll help them integrate quicker. But definitely. I mean, some of the things that some of the teams do, I mean, Harlequins, for example, have deliberately gone out for, di- um, for team dinners as soon as the players come back to try and reintegrate them as quickly as possible. Um, so it'll be interesting to hear if any, if any of that kind of stuff comes out of the camps. So on the one hand, you know, I think it's tough to integrate yourself just on the pitch. You know, you've been playing with a different set of players and now you're going to come back and 
play with some guys you haven't seen in a month. On the other hand, you know, this is a really, this is, I mean, this is a unique return for the Eagles guys in, in the sense that um, MLR's new, but, but this is a unique set of circumstances in that the Eagles have had a June they've almost never had before. Um, so, you know, I, I think those guys are really going to feel good about themselves, and I would think they'd be pretty excited to come back and, and just be able to play some more rugby, whether it's club team or, or Eagles or otherwise, playoffs, regular season or otherwise. And again, that's why I wonder a little bit about Seattle and, and the Canadians. If, if, uh, if without that same type of momentum, um, they're going to take a step backward, or they're going to find it at least a little bit tougher to reintegrate those guys. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, some, sometimes the uh, some of the some of the players who came back from England duty, especially the, the young ones who it's like the first time, would wear their England training kit to training and would be very quickly brought back down to earth um, by all the other players. <laughs> So there may be an element also of that, of kind of like, yeah, okay, fine, you've gone away, you've had some really great stuff, we don't want to hear about it so much, thank you very much. Um, stop bragging. So there's all sorts of dynamics going on. It's not just the players coming back, but it's also the players that didn't get to go um, and didn't get to do it. Um, I mean, with Utah, you've also got, um, oh, I've just gone blank, uh, um, oh, Kurt Morath coming back from Tonga, um, for example. Uh, so it's not only him, he's also, actually, well, he'll be flying back, yeah, no, from Tonga, that's right. Uh, so he'll be, uh, or maybe it's Fiji. He's played. They 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 played, they played away, but he's got quite a long long haul flight back. Whereas I think most other players will have just be coming back from Canada, um, which is a much closer, much closer trip, and and not not the time zone issues that you get from uh, from the Pacific Isles. Yeah, well, they played. Uh, I mean, uh, the Eagles in Canada, in Canada played, in, I think, in, in Halifax. So I mean, that was two thirds of the way to Dublin. So they've got a little bit of a flight. Back to back to Colorado. Um, yeah, I, I I think you're right. I, I just with Utah, Glendale's. I think Glendale's going to figure it out. Glendale's going to figure it out. They're gonna they're going to be in that final out in San Diego. It's it's a question of uh, of uh, who they're going to be playing against. It'd be it, it, Glendale versus San Diego back in San Diego again would be a, a really interesting match with with everyone there. Um, it would definitely be a really interesting match because you say yeah, they, they would both, well, San Diego would feel pretty confident that they've done it before and Glendale would have a, it would be their only loss of the season um, so they'd have some, some wrongs to right. Uh, so maybe that would be the best story, which may not uh, um, be the kind of thing that uh, Raymond and, um, and Tony want to hear, but, uh, but there we go. Um, <laughs> so cool. Thank you, Rob, for joining me. Uh, it's been a great chat yet again. Um, why don't you let people know where they can find your wonderful rugby knowledge during the week? Um, so my, my Twitter feed is, is Rugby in America. Um, I, I play around with a blog called The Rugby Falcon. You can uh, find that through the Twitter feed. Um, yeah, that'll do it. And hey, I'm Paul, the guy behind Driving Malls. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, um, because I'll be back again next weekend with uh, post-match reaction to the two games in uh, uh, Rugby Town. And uh, we will, uh, and hopefully, I'll have Rob and uh, maybe some others back to discuss those games as well. Enjoy, enjoy your weeks and whatever rugby you're watching. <laughs>